Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Holliday and I'm here to bring you a special new video. For a long time now I've been making videos about GMOs and for the most part I've just been trying to address certain aspects of pseudoscience addressed to them, but this has been wide and expansive and so I figured I would narrow the focus down and make a series of videos where I address one specific topic and this way it can be easily utilized if people are confused and you can share this with them and hopefully they will understand or they'll just call me a shill. So without further ado, let's get started. To start off, I thought I'd talk about a myth that's actually very prevalent in conversations when people are talking about concerns with GMOs and that is there's pesticide in the plant. Pesticide in the plant. Well, they're referring to a very specific type of pesticide. And people will kind of conflate this because they tend to think that every pesticide is Roundup or every pesticide is made by Monsanto or whatever. And we're going to get into the differences of different types of chemicals or different companies that are using GMOs and address each of those things in later videos. But for now, we're going to talk about BT. What is BT, you ask? BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. Blah, 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 blah this. But for the purposes of this video, so I don't stumble over my words the whole time, we're just going to call it BT. BT is an insecticide, and it's been used for over 50 years now in farming, and specifically to try and target certain types of insects. There are different types of BT, but they all are pretty much very similar. Okay, but what is it? BT is a bacterium that produces cryproteins, and these cryproteins are toxic to certain types of insects. And it's true that there are GMO plants that are specifically designed, mostly soy and corn, to express their own BT. The plant has been genetically enhanced to produce BT delta endotoxin, the same protein that BT bacterium otherwise produces. The action in BT, though, is very specific. It reacts only to certain types of proteins in gut bacteria. And those types of proteins in gut bacteria are only present in certain types of insects. Different insects have different receptors lining in their gut, and those react to certain different types of BT. That's how you can craft BT to address one type of insect or a different type of insect, depending on what it is. The GMO variants, for the most part, don't come in too many of those different types of variants, and that's kind of confusing, because if you're wondering why there might be more variants but not in the GMO, that would be because BT is also an organic insecticide. That's right, an organic insecticide. And what's hilarious about this too is usually when people start trying to scare you about GMOs, they'll have all these pictures of various different vegetables and fruits with syringes sticking inside of them, and that's not how GMOs are made. And that's not even close to how GMOs are made. Instead, here's this picture. And what we're looking at right here is somebody using a syringe to inject BT into a plant, but that's an organic crop. That's an organic crop, and they're injecting it. Yet at the same time, we people will try and scare you into thinking that that's how they produce this mad scientist food that's not food, blah, blah. But nothing could be further from the truth. Instead, the reality of it is BT is very effective, super effective. And farmers, as much as we think that we have to defend farmers because of corporations, farmers are smart and they only want to do the things that are going to help their crop and their land. And because of that, farmers will cultivate certain types of crops and use certain types of BT on it so that they don't accidentally kill beneficial insects which help with pollination, fighting off other pests, etc, 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 etc. Well, hey now, hey though, we're not really addressing the elephant in the room right now, are we? The fact of the matter is, is that there's this pesticide, this, this insecticide inside the food. Holy crap! Why isn't that toxic to humans? All right, quick thought experiment. How many of you out there have ever heard the old saying, don't give chocolate to dogs, that chocolate is toxic to dogs? Well, it's not just chocolate, but it's also grapes and raisins and several other different types of food. The reason why this is, is that dogs, as much as we are similar to dogs, we're both mammals, we're both adorable, at least I am, um, but they have various different makeups in their gut lining. They interface differently with different types of food. Dogs, by and large, are usually very susceptible to things like grapes and raisins and chocolate, and we can eat them with absolutely no problem whatsoever. That's just a simple nature of, of biological makeup. We can eat tons of things that would kill a dog. We can eat tons of things that would kill an insect. 
if we have such a stark difference between a dog and things that we can consume, is it really so out of the realm of possibility? That something that might be bad for an insect is totally fine for human beings. Look, this all breaks down really simply. BT is here and we use it, we use it all the time. And even if you don't wanna consume GMOs, which is fine, that's totally your choice, that doesn't mean you're not consuming BT. That's not saying that BT isn't getting into your diet somehow because it is widely used, widely used through organic farming. And it's not like they're just simply spraying the BT, they inject it at times. So you could be having pesticides in your food, even if you're limiting your GMO intake. So the idea of trying to raise some sort of alarm or an argument against GMOs because of BT is ridiculous. Hopefully that helps clear the air a little bit. Anyway, that's it for this episode of GMO Myths. If anybody out there has suggestions on concerns they would like me to address, please leave me a comment below and I would love to hear from all of you. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye. Hello, my name is Jeff Holiday, and I make videos on science and skepticism. Evil hmm. biotech. Sometimes I play video games. Break yourself. Hmm. And sometimes I'm just goofing off. If you like anything that I do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like that, and don't forget to check out my